We are in a fight with the devil. The enemy has been loosed on our culture and it is rampant in this world. I think everybody seems to be losing their mind as they surrender to this demonic hurricane that is sweeping across our land. And I am afraid that we are ignorant of the devil's devices. Paul said, I don't want you ignorant. And he said, I'm not ignorant of the devil's devices. But we learn from Hosea that there are people who die from lack of knowledge. Welcome to the Buford Church of God. We are so excited that you are joining with us today. This audience that is viewing us through the television is part of our family. We take this as an honor and a privilege to serve you today. And we're asking God that the same anointing we feel in the sanctuary will be communicated through your television right there into your home. We believe that where two or three are gathered together, either in person or through this means of communication, that we are gathered together in His name and He is there among us. And we're asking God to meet those needs in your life today. And we're going to pray a special prayer for you today. We're going to ask God to bless you and guard you and allow this service to minister to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I ask you to touch every viewer today. Be with them. Go meet them right there where they are. I pray you'd restore them, heal them. Bring them to the knowledge of you, God, and bless them and let your glory be revealed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave. Break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, graces waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the covenant when they was going into battle they shouted two things they'd pick up that ark of the covenant and as soon as they picked it up a trumpet would sound and everybody would stand at the same time and they would look toward the ark of the covenant and a priest would step out in front of the ark of the covenant for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever that's what King Hezekiah, that you look at these kings in the Old Testament when they went into battle, they would oftentimes send the worshipers into battle before the army went in. They would simply shout, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And then another king or another priest would shout, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Can you imagine being the enemy on the other side of the ball field? That joker picks up a box, a gold box, and there, there's history of this where they have a glow inside the cherub wings. There would, there would be like a blue glow. They would pick up this box and they would treat it with holy reverence. And these strong priests would begin walking down to the battlefield and another priest would start shouting, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And another priest would begin to shout, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. 
And today I speak over your life. I'm taking authority over every spirit of suicide, every demon of depression, every devil of, de of the poverty. I come against those things in the name of Jesus, and I declare that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I declare let God arise and his enemies be scattered. I want you to walk out of here in victory. I want you to walk out in power and authority in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to, I got to give you some advice. Let me, let, me, let me get this in your spirit. Number one, keep the fight outside of your soul. That's why you wear the armor of God, to keep him out of your thought life. Your problem is you're making the battle internal. And you're the one that's vexed. You're the one that can't sleep. You're the one that can't eat right. You're the one that's always battling these weird, crazy things going through your mind because you let the devil that was on the outside start fighting you in your own thought life. You need to take control of your thoughts and leave the devil on the battlefield. No, no, no. He don't need to come to my house. The gates of hell shall not prevail against him. That means we're knocking on his gates. He stays out of my cul-de-sac. I'm going to his house. This is a war of occupation and a war of aggression. It is not a war of survival. It is not a war of hold the fort till Jesus comes. I'm marching triumphantly in the promised land, and I pick the battlefield. He can't come where I am. I'll go where he is. See, he's only in your mind because he's not running from you anymore. He's chasing you down. That's why I guess in your life, keep it outside. When you start trying to fight battles with people, don't take it personal. Pastor, they're talking about you. I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to get talked about. <laughs> pastor, I've talked about you myself. Sure. Does it bother you? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't think like that. I'm not a hater. I don't spend any time worried about, you know, if this one likes me, if I got three likes on this one and two thumbs down on that one. I'm not taking votes. I serve a king. I'm an ambassador. My passport is stamped in the city halls of glory. I represent somebody who rose from the dead. How dare I condescend to walking around like my feelings are hurt because somebody put something on Facebook. Talk to me, church. Got to keep it outside. What they do doesn't even have any reflection on me. What's on the inside of me? Cheeseburger? <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies? Pastor, why are you saying that? The Bible says say that stuff. Where does it say that? Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Come on, church. Whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I've got so much good stuff in here, you can't change the radio channel of me. I've already yielded my thoughts to him, and he's filled it up with glorious thoughts of the, the sweet by and by. I'm too happy with where I am. I'm too at peace with where I am to be consumed with the drama of you. If you're going to cast out devils, you better realize you're dealing with devils, not with people. You just get your hands off of it. When you lay down at sleep to sleep at night, you just put them in the hands of God because by the time you figure out what to do with you, it's bedtime. Amen. Let me give you a second piece of advice. Don't fight any battles for which there are no spoils. Some of you have been fighting stuff and it's silly. You know what, Pastor? I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm tired of this business having to wear shoes at church. We should be all taking our shoes off at church, every one of us. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start telling everybody, you can take your shoes. That's if y'all don't think it's holy ground wearing these shoes and stuff. So I'm gonna fight for six months. Even if you win, what do you get? Nothing. Bare feet. <laughs> Even if you lose, what do you lose? Nothing. We still have the same feet. The Bible said, keep your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. <laughs> Pastor, 
You know, Aaron, he wants to wave banners in church. I told him, no. <laughs> he brought these little streamers. He wants to come running across the front. He tired of Marty getting all the, all the praise moments. He's not real loud like, like these guys on the front row. So he said, I'm going to bring some stuff down here, wave it up front. Had to take it away from him today. <laughs> Sometimes you fight battles. You're, you're, you're getting in fights. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't believe they did that to them. You don't know them and you don't know what happened. The Bible says like a, like a fool grabbing a dog by the ears is a person who will stick their nose in somebody else's business. It's in Proverbs. Take a wild dog by the ears, put your face right there in those teeth, and that's what the Bible says you're doing when you get involved with somebody else's drama. You don't know the whole story. Well, I heard what I needed to hear. No, you heard what the devil wanted you to hear. <laughs> Pastor, what kind of battles do I need to be fighting? Fight against suicide. Amen. Fight against this sex trafficking that's going on with all these babies getting stolen. We got these orphans in Uganda. We got orphans in Nairobi. We got, we got orphans in Ukraine. We got or Fight for the babies that don't have a mama and a daddy. Fight for those people that don't have any food. Fight against these issues of life. Get yourself a new job and start to preach and teach in the break room when people are listening to you. Somebody get a, get a real battle. When David was going to fight Goliath, he said, what you going to give me when I knock his head off? In other words, I'm not going to fight if I don't get anything. Yes, sir. If I'm going to go down there and get in this fight, when I come out, I'm going to have some stuff. I'm not just going down to the enemy's camp just to play some games. I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. And the Lord's going to bless my life. Somebody give God praise. You need to wait for the sound of the army marching in the mulberry trees. God told the people, he said, don't fight this battle the same way you did yesterday. This time, come around behind them and wait in the trees. And when you hear the sound of an army marching in the mulberry trees, then you'll know I've gone before you and you'll win the battle. You're fighting many times the right battle, but you're too early. You're trying to fix stuff before God releases you to get involved. You got to wait. That's what happened to Moses. Moses wanted to fix stuff, and he took the matter in his own hands, and it cost him 40 years of his life. Why? He got ahead of God. You got to wait. Pastor, I don't want to wait. That's what God told the people of Israel when they marched around the walls of Jericho seven days on the seventh day, seven times, and while you're walking and while you're marching, shut up. The miracle in that passage is not the collapse of the walls of Jericho. The real miracle in that passage is that he could get the whole church to keep their mouth shut for seven days. <laughs> Wait. Hold up. God will make it plain. If it be you, bid me walk on the water. But I'm going to hang tough until God, I'm not going to move without you. But when you move, I move. When God says, when he said to the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest carrying it, marching through the camp, then get up and chase my presence and go into the promised land. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. There will be a day that God sends us into the streets. There will be a day that God fulfills your purpose. But you have to wait until God moves. You can't get ahead of God and you can't get ahead of God's family. Oh, this is good stuff. Last but not least, you've got to use the right weapons. Problem is, you're fighting the devil with weapons that belong to hell, and those weapons are corrupting you, and you are finding yourself acting just like the devil you're fighting against because you're using his weapons. You need to use what God gave you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Am I right about it? We need to use the armor of God. Put on that armor of God. Protect yourself. You need to use the family of God. 
The Bible says if any two will agree as touching anything, we can ask what we will and it shall be done. Your problem is you're praying by yourself. You need to get somebody full of faith in the Holy Ghost, put your hand in their hand and say in the name of Jesus, I agree with you right now that the power of God is going to come over this place. I'll show you how this works. Mia, Mia come here real quick. I'm going to show you what agreement looks like. Right there is what agreement looks like. See, I agree with that. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, baby. <laughs> See, if I go down, she goes down. <laughs> she wearing, she's not taller than I am. No. She's not. She really isn't. I promise. Now, if we're both barefooted, I would, I uh, ah, forget it. They're never going to believe me. <laughs> but see, I agree with her. Those are our babies. You know, I want her to do well. There's nothing that I want bad for her, ever. I want good things for her. She wants good things for me. We pull for each other. We're yoked together. And so we're in agreement. We're not just agreeing. We are in agreement. So watch this. May I just put your hands up over this crowd right now. In the name of Jesus, we bless this church right now. We release authority over their lives. I bind the power of hell that's come against them. I come against that spirit of depression, that spirit of infirmity, that sickness that's from the devil. In the name of Jesus, I bind it. I come against intimidation. I release faith, hope, and love in the name of Jesus. See, one could put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. You get somebody praying with you, and then all of a sudden you got an army of two in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Miss Mia. Give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> got to use the family of God. I want you to hear this. I want you to use the gifts of God, the spiritual gifts. Some of you are creating trouble for yourself because of how you pray. Your prayer life is not prayer, it's whining. You're spending so much time complaining about what you don't have and what you need that the devil stands right beside you while you're praying, taking notes on how to wreck your mind. God, I'm so tired of being terrified in traffic. God, I'm, I have all these people honking their horn. Write that down. We need about three more horn honkers right there. Get them wrapped up tomorrow. And oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. These politics are just frustrating me and these people all over the world. Make sure we get that radio station changed at their break room. We want that news on when they come in. We got, and all of a sudden, your whole life is being told to the devil because you don't pray right. You need to put some spiritual gifts in your prayer closet. Why? The devil doesn't know what to do with them. When you don't know how to pray, the Spirit of God will pray through you so that what you pray for is what he's praying for. And all of a sudden, you release the gifts of the Holy Ghost in your life, and the devil doesn't know what you're talking about. We had them. I had them booked. We had them. All of a sudden, something started happening, and a cloud showed up. I couldn't find them anymore. Then the glory of God came down, and an angel just knocked my brother back out of the closet. Now, I don't know what we're going to do. We can't find the house. It's covered with the glory of God. See, when you pray, listen to me, shut the door. That's what Jesus said. When you pray, what? Shut the door. He wasn't talking about physical closets because he prayed out in public as well. What he meant by that was you get in the prayer closet with the Father and you shut the door on the devil and you say, Heavenly Father, I want to go to a place where only you're listening. I don't want the devil in here. I don't want him listening to what I'm saying. I came not to talk to the devil today. I came to talk to my God today. So, Heavenly Father, today I dwell not in the public square of the demonic opinions in my life. Today I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but I will not come nigh me. God is on my side, and I release the gifts of God in my life. Shout this with me, Word of God. You need to stop praying what you say and start praying what he says. 
get in the presence of the Lord, start quoting scripture. God, you said in your word that by your stripes I am healed. I don't come to you with my own righteousness, but I plead the blood in the name of Jesus. I found stripes that heal my body, and I ask you, God, to touch me right now. You told me that if I would resist the devil, he would flee from me. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I stand on the authority of your word, and I say to the devil, he's got to get out because the Bible says he's got to go in the name of no above all names. You said in your word that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, to them that are thee called according to his purpose. You said my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You said in your word you would save me and my whole house and I stand on the word. Bring my babies out of hell right now in the name of Jesus. I pray the word of God. And I want you to shout this with me. And I'll, I'll leave you alone for a minute. I want you to say, Name of God. Name you got to use that name. Amen. You got to say it. Say it with me. Jesus. Ain't no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved except the name of Jesus. And at that name. Every knee shall bow. That doesn't just mean Christians in the church. That means devils in hell. They've got to bow to the name of Jesus. When the devil comes into your life, stop putting the nuclear weapons in the closet and bring them out and say, in the name of Jesus, that name which is above every name. And don't just use the name. Brag on it for a minute. I come against you, not with sport, sword and spear, but in the name of the Lord God of Israel. The one that, uh, hold on a minute, it's coming to me. He's a good God. Yes. Devil laughs at you a little bit. Oh, you can't, that's, a, that's silly. Well, he's a big God. When everybody else walked out, he walked in. Yeah, he healed my body. He's the, he's the one that walked on water. The one that broke bread fed 5,000 hungry souls, raised the dead, heals the sick, writes my name down in the Lamb's book of life. And the longer you brag on him, you learn the value of the words we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Somebody shout Jesus real loud in this house. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus, that name which is above every name, I bring this congregation before the throne of God that we might obtain mercy. And I ask you, God, get the devil off their computer. Get the devil out of their television. Get the devil out of their minds. Get the devil out of their children. Get the devil out of their finances. Heavenly Father, I bind the strong man over every member of the Buford Church of God. And I ask you, God, to release it an avalanche of your glory and your power and your way, Heavenly Father. Let me say to those watching me on television or on the internet, perhaps even in the house, you don't have to go to hell. You don't have to live in hell. We have found blood that pardons and we have found stripes that heal. I know a God that will save your life. I want to teach you a prayer today and I believe just as Jesus taught his disciples to pray that I can teach you how to pray. And if you'll pray this prayer with me in faith believing, I trust that God can save your life. Would all of you say this with me, Jesus? Forgive me of my sins. I'm so sorry. I'm coming home. I know you came. I know you lived and died for me. I know you rose from the dead. And I know you're coming back. I don't want to be left out. So please, come into my heart. Save my soul. Write my name down in your book. And help me be a Christian. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer today, I invite you to the altars. And as my wife and I pray for everyone else, you can quietly lean in and let me know. I prayed that prayer. I want to hear that. If you're online and you prayed that prayer, please type into the chat stream. I prayed that prayer. If you're on television, contact us with the information that's on your screen now. 
Let us know that God is moving in your life. We want to help you find a church. May you be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when you rise and when you lay down at night. May the Lord bless you and keep you and turn his countenance towards you and be gracious to you. Make his face shine on you and give you peace. Beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rains fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next Sunday.